Happy day. Um, oh. <laughs> happy w- episode 180. No, that's not right. Are you Two- kidding me? I don't know. What every For ye- like a year now, Christine thinks every episode is like 189. And, or I don't understand what's happening. I think the problem is, and that's or Beach to Sandy's on episode 191 or something. So I'm like very mixed up. Well, this is only, a- how are you only 100 episodes behind us? uh well we started in december of 2018 so only like no way in my mind it has been so much shorter i know it was pretty um it was right after my wedding so (gasps) oh wow it really has been that long Mm -hmm. okay well then that makes sense well yeah just add 100 every time because we're on 290 that's smart idea that's smart you'll forget I forget. I forget. That's okay. In thirty seconds, I'll I'll have forgotten. Um, You'll be like, "Welcome to episode one eighty nine. Remember that time when I said, "Welcome to episode one," and you were like, "That <laughs> is the farthest from the possibility." Like, no. I think we had to re-record. I was like, oh, "Don't <laughs> embarrass yourself like that." Um, how are yeah. you? Um, I'm I'm fine. I'm still in my funk. I don't know. It's lasted oh. for a while. Maybe I need a therapist. But um, here's the fun part. I do have a good reason. Why. Ask me why I drink. Hey, um, why do you drink this week? I did not see that coming after 290 episodes. Um, what? Thank you for surprising me with that question. Oh, you're welcome. It, I'd like to keep you on your toes. I know it. Uh, I drink because uh, I officially, now that that horrid ambulance experience oh boy i said it i think i said in the last episode too but i was like that was actually a good thing a a good thing because we had been waiting for evidence of it an official an official diagnosis that way i could get a surgery date so as of by the time this comes out I don't know what it is yet, but in like a few days i have another doctor's appointment for my surgery consultation and i get a surgery date thank god so, and my goal is to have it done before the, before we go back and do our September shows. So, um, if w- that happens, it's one problem less, although I'm also worried about my blood pressure. And so I don't know if some of the symptoms I'm experiencing on a daily basis are blood pressure related. So it's going to be its own headache when I get the surgery. And then if I still feel certain things going on, I'm gonna be like, God damn it. Like, <laughs> but well, hopefully at least now you can, you can hope that we have one thing fixed. to scratch off the list. Yeah. A big so, one, a big, a one. big one, a big old heart. Oh, so I'm so happy for you. Thank you. So that's why I drink. I actually forgot to get a drink, uh, <sighs> but I can tell you it would have been water. So <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Thrilling. I'm actually, I'm going to get a big old cup of chocolate milk at the end of this as a reward so oh my do you have that in your fridge or are you gonna go get it somewhere i have it in my fridge and i have been using um like old jewish deli chocolate syrup which is oh, lovely yum so um we have we have the old school hershey's too but um yeah for my birthday a while ago i think i said this already but allison took me to a museum mm-hmm. of jewish deli stuff and the gift shop was like literally just like a basically a jewish deli <laughs> i mean what a dream gift shop it was just i i love my people and so um <laughs> anyway i ended up getting a bunch of stuff including that chocolate sauce so chocolate milk the it has been quite a success in this house lately why do you drink christine um i i saw a ghost shut up i'm did you dead, really i'm dead serious again the second one of, again. The second one of my life, and they've okay. Well, Terrified. And let me go. So it was in your haunted ass house. No, it was when I was on my trip. What? Oh, okay. you, well, you went to Georgia. So. Yeah, I saw a scary ghost. Was it in your hotel? Yes. Was it in your hotel room? Yes. Forget it. What, I know what happened. Oh my god, Em, I was so scared and I, I couldn't text you because I was like, I want to tell Em on the show, but I was freaking out. So I had to text my mom and she was like, okay. And I was like, no, somebody needs to be concerned. Question of the year. Yes. Did your Capricorn 
no nonsense <laughs> husband see this ghost. No, be okay. I'll of tell course it. he did it. Well, of course not. But you know that would be too easy, right? <laughs> uh, but he what did happened? seem to believe me, which I appreciated. Um, what happened? Okay, so we were on our way back. So I went to Georgia for a lovely. Um, I got to reunite with a lot of my cousins that I haven't seen in years pre-COVID. Um, and see all their babies and so all the babies got to meet each other and it was very special and wonderful and like just a very happy weekend um but so it was very quick turnaround so blaze and i stopped in nashville on the way down and it was so chaotic because it was like bachelorette parties everywhere it was like friday night and it was it was a lot uh let's just put it that way and so on the way back i was like why don't we stop in knoxville i've never been in knoxville it's the same distance and so we just randomly picked uh, the Courtyard Marriott in downtown Nashville, or I'm sorry, Knoxville. Oh, and so it wasn't even like a, like, like, no, the spooky ooky places. No. And I told my brother this, and he was like, honestly, that's more convincing than if you had said you were staying in some haunted place and were like looking for ghosts. And I was like, I guess that's true. I guess I, that's true. I was like totally blindsided. So we drove up to Knoxville. We had a lovely dinner. I actually loved knoxville i had never been there before have you it's it's really pretty yeah yeah we were just like astounded it was so pretty and um it was very quiet compared to nashville i mean it it was like a monday or sunday so you know that might be why but we were on a street called gay street and i was like hell yeah (laughs) and then i was like that would be too um too too easy if this were actually like the lgbt part of town but then there was a theater district right there and it was like in art park and there were all these cool young people and i was like damn this is a really neat area so i was very impressed with knoxville went to bed and about four in the morning i heard in my room like i was dead asleep and i heard i got like you know that feeling when you're like so asleep but then you feel like something's like pulling you awake like something like yeah an outside stimuli like somebody's talking or trying to wake you and you're like getting pulled out of your dream Mm -hmm. so i was like getting woken up and i was like what is that and then i still had my eyes closed i woke up and i realized oh god that's one of leona's toys and it's talking (gasps) and it was going i know and it was going and i was like what the hell and it was going like she has like this little cell phone and it goes like give me a call let's talk or something and it it started going off and I was like what the f so I look I like kind of whip my eyes open and there is a man sitting at the foot of my bed just staring at me like just sitting there and I didn't have my glasses on I just saw like the shape of a man and so I went lays and literally in front of my eyes it just like evaporated like little particles just evaporated and I was so stunned. And then I like whipped my head over to the side and Blaze was completely asleep next to me. And I went, uh-oh, that was not Blaze. Just so you know, oh. that is a, a goose cam situation. <laughs> it was so, it was so freaky. And then I realized, I mean, this is probably TMI, but I like, I don't like to sleep with pants on. So I'm in my underwear and I'm sleeping on top of the covers, which is very weird because in hotels, I like to sleep like underneath when it's all t- tucked in. Like, yeah, tight. yeah, yeah. And so... I had been like, I'd like slid in earlier. And so it was all tucked in. And now I was like laying on top of the covers and everything underneath was like tucked in. And I was (gasps) like, how did I get on top of the covers? Like I must have like crawled out. Like, I don't know how I got out. And I was in my underwear and I was just laying there. And I was like, so this pervy, creepy ghost is just staring at me in my underwear. Oh man, he saw a tush and he came (laughs) coming in quick. (laughs) I did not get a good vibe. Um, And so anyway, I got real flipped out and then I had to pee. So I was so scared and I went pee. And then uh, on the way out, I walked into the stroller and I like, (laughs) I was so scared. Oh my God. There's a person. Anyway. And then Blaze was like, well, you fell back asleep. I was like, no, I needed to like lay there for 45 minutes. I listened to a meditation. I was scared to open my eyes. Um, Anyway. So it was very real, very alarming. And did you think it would come back or did you feel like you were stared at? At the at the end, like, did you feel like now you were still being stared at? But you no, just it almost see him? felt like it just disappeared. Um, but so you I was, felt like you were alone in the room, at least. Yes, I felt like it, it went away. Um, the paranoia would have. I, I would have been so like, oh, flipped I, out. It's gonna come back. I was just so freaked out it was gonna come back, and then I kept looking exactly where I'd seen it to see if like maybe there was something hanging there, and I had just imagined it, but it was just a blank wall, and I was like, there was a person sitting there, like in, and he was in like a a white like um. Or what are these called? A tank, tank top? tops? Yeah. It was like in a white tank top undershirt. 
like an that undershirt. Adds to, I get that like you're in a hotel room and maybe he like maybe he died in that room and yeah. that was what he was wearing when he was asleep. But like also that that aesthetic makes me feel like I don't know why I don't know it gives another creep factor for it some did. reason. It did. It felt kind of creepy especially because he was staring at me in my underwear <laughs> i was like you're in an undershirt i don't also, like this i mean i'm not even I, i'm more focused on how you like melted through the blanket what and, i was and so weirded out about showed up on top Are, is there there's no way that you've like just you planned on going to bed soon but you fell asleep playing no your Switch or something. because no no and because i'd been in there for, for like watching my, on my tv on my ipad for like an hour before bed so i was and i do not like to sleep without any covers i hate it and it was freezing in that room so i was like what so i'm like also cold Ew, it was horrible what are the odds because like they always how people like are always hiding under a cover when they think they see a ghost or yeah being stared at <laughs> like, there's not even and, access like, to one <laughs> but also how weird is that that if you were already covered like that just lets everyone know like a psa of like it doesn't matter if you're under the covers yeah, or not you will not you will and somehow you will supernaturally end up above <laughs> the covers so it who was cares so weird because i had to get out of bed to pull the covers back to get in bed you know what i mean like it was very and it was all tucked in tight underneath yes you? it was tight underneath because Ugh. i had like shimmied in earlier so it was just bizarre i don't know what happened did you have a baby cam on leona can you, re did you no just record? she was just in a pack and play right next to me so we didn't have Ugh, like a girl. camera i'm telling you now that you've i mean they always say that ghosts really just show up with babies and little kids I so i think from now on every time you're in a hotel room with her you absolutely have to ha keep a like a recording baby cam <laughs> oh, in the room i don't know if i want to see that if somebody's like, i do give send it to me i would totally <laughs> i'll i'll quality quality check for you You do a qc every time we stay yeah, in yeah, the yeah. hotel yeah you got to see me in my underwear i guess by you're not going to enjoy that part, you have slept next to me in your underwear i think true. we're good i think we've both <laughs> seen each other in our underwear plenty of times it's not plenty anything of new. times i literally <laughs> barely wear pants around you anymore so i'm not even wearing <laughs> pants right now so. hey look at that yeah um, well whatever anyway so the first ghost i saw was at whaley house with al and now this one so i've never actually seen i've heard one but i've never seen one until uh, you know, those two. So, wow, man, that is spooky. <sighs> I'm so glad I finally got to tell you. I was flipping out. I believe you. I'll tell Thank you that. You. Right now. I appreciate that. My mom actually believed me when I told her in person, and she's like, Oh, well, um, who did it look like? Maybe it was your grandfather. And I was like, No, no, this was not a person I knew. This, this was a dude at Marriott. A creepy Marriott dude. And she was like, Maybe he died in that room. And I was like, Man, mom's my mom's believing me on this one. So I mean, it is it is believable, but I also it really makes me uncomfortable because I like to tell myself when I go to places like Marriott, I'm like, Oh, You're if I'm safe. nervous about a ghost, I'm mm -hmm. like, Well, this is like such a like 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 a an establishment okay. in my mind it's you know what i mean yeah absolutely it's more like a sterile environment like you're not yeah. in yeah, it doesn't I look totally, like it has the history to no have, to i totally get that and that's why i think i was so like blindsided by it and also i want to add that this marriott is like brand new like this is like i think they opened like either this year like this spring or so i don't know so, so something that was on even, the property, maybe? Yeah, so that was even more surprising. I don't know if the building used to be a hotel, but then that also gets into, like, they just renovated the whole thing, like, mm. a month or two ago. Maybe it's stirring shit up, you know? I don't know. Yeah. But it was, like, a brand new... I mean, it wasn't fancy, but it was, like, a brand new place. So I wonder, you know, where that came from. Um, so stinking wild. Ew, oh, the, oh, the, the, the word, undershirt. I, I, I wonder if anything else would have happened had you not woken up. Ooh. Yeah, also, that, wait, so was he... So he wasn't playing with the toy. You just no, happened to hear he the toy. Just, I heard the toy that woke it woke me up, and then I like sat up, and there was just a man staring at me, and I was like, "What do you think, the hell?" Do you think the toy went off because like Leona rolled over it, or do you think he was using no, no, its like energy? Yeah, the toy was on um on the counter under the TV, so there was like no like she oh, didn't it's almost have like it sucked it. up its its yeah, electric you know something. and I was wondering that too. I was wondering if it was just because the presence of the spirit, or if it was like. He did it on purpose to wake me up. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, but it, the, like, what a what a cr weird, creepy move to be like. I need you to wake up so I can vanish in front of you. Yeah, to, maybe just like to. And it, that weird thing was too. It stayed there until I went blaze, and then it like disappeared. And I was like, what the hell just happened? Which is one of those creepy ass stories that we've always talked about about when it acknowledges that you've acknowledged <laughs> yeah! it. Yeah. Oh, um. Oh God, it was so scary. <laughs> 
<laughs> How did it evaporate? Was it a melting or a okay. fading? You know, that's so interesting. It was almost like particles. Like it looked like, you know, um, on a PowerPoint when you do a custom animation and it like uh-huh. I dissolves. Know exactly. Pixelate? Yeah. Or dissolve. Or dissolve. Dissolve. It was almost like little pixelate but, but like little like dissolve yeah dissolve by the way was my go-to transition on same Microsoft uh, powerpoint love i love a good, a good dissolve. star wipe but i know that's kind of like very 90s but um, you know let's let's make that like patreon content eventually where we just go through all the old transitions Our favorite and custom animation on word art. <laughs> actually that sounds so nice on my brain after honestly everything. how soothing would that be um yeah <gasps> well, we can do that today after i'm sure everyone's gonna sign up for patreon now that they know we're discussing custom animation word art um eh? <laughs> I think you'd be surprised. At least one person will. <laughs> um, but I'm very glad you got to see a ghost. I am sorry, though, that you got to see a ghost. It's like I, one of those things where I'm happy for you, but I, I also know. don't wish I was you. And it's a very you and me thing where I was like, at least I have a story. Like, I went back to sleep being all, like, mad, but I was like, ah, at least I'm playing this time. Content. Content for the podcast. Well, I'm um, glad you had content. My thing is just my stupid heart these days. And I wanted to tell everyone, um, I did ask my doctor... Um, because I was like th- that adenosine really knocked me on my ass and like the, Is that the, the thing sh- in the the thing that like ambulance? I felt my I felt my soul oh, being ripped out of my, my body God, forget it and so I asked him I was like did I die like what was happening because it f- certainly felt like a fraction of the death experience like yeah. it, everything I've ever heard of it felt like that and he kind of was wishy-washy on his own he was like eh like <gasps> I, I was in like you're you were on your way to being on your way but uh yeah. i guess that, i guess that it apparently was not uh, he was like so your heart did stop but you didn't die and i was like i don't believe that sentence <laughs> <laughs> so apparently the med- the official medical report is eh but um i got to tell you it certainly felt I, it felt bad <laughs> so, so anyway i just wanted to clear it up cuz i know last week i was like uh, like maybe maybe i i don't know and also i don't want to like be like tasteless about anyone actually experiencing grief or something sure. so, but i i really i was confused because i was like it certainly felt like i was leaving <laughs> that's permanently. really interesting because you did mention it felt like you were being like sucked out of your body almost which is like that is i guess it, how people describe it i i remember thinking i i oh God, this sounds scary this is so dramatic but I remember thinking about my mom and I remember thinking, oh, she really will be my last memory or she really really. She, it's so dramatic. But I was <laughs> like, oh, shit. she I was like, oh, wow. So this is actually my last thought. And then I like <laughs> blacked out. And then I, I woke up to them like it's smacking me in the face being like, are you OK? Are you OK? <laughs> I wonder so. if now you'll have, you know, that little access to the other side or if it was not oh, enough wh- to get I, you there. Allison, I don't know if she was serious or not, but she texted me after the fact and she was like, are you psychic now? And I- Yeah, <laughs> I'm wondering. <laughs> uh, well, you're the one seeing ghosts, so I'm going to give it a I know. What the hell no. is that about? I don't I don't want to be involved. <laughs> it, anyway, just wanted to give everyone an update. Uh, if you ever have to get adenosine, apparently you're you are not going to the other side, but you will feel like it. So you're on your way to going to the other side. You're on your you're packing the bags, but you don't go on the trip, you know? <laughs> Wow, what a freaking tale. I mean, um, what a dramatic year we're having. I know. Well, I'm I'm excited for your ghost story. I hope for your men's your sanity that it's the last Thank one for you. a while. Me too. <laughs> Although you do have a baby now, so you really walked yourself into a yeah. Uh, yeah. paranormal situation. Ooh, I know. Well, I'll keep you updated. I'll keep you updated. I do have a story for you today. Excellent. And, oh, what are you drinking? Oh, I also forgot my beverage. Um, I do have a bottle of wine here because we had a little, and that's why we drank happy hour last night. But um, We did. Uh, it was very lovely. It was. It was so fun. Um, but it's 1.30 in the afternoon here, so I think I'm going to abstain uh, for now. Hmm. So. 1.30 would mean nothing to me. I'd be I like, well, know. It's right here. Uh. Um, okay. So this is a folklore situation where we don't know if it was i think the origins were it was a ghost Mm -hmm. and then it kind of turns into an alleged true crimey situation okay i love it it's a blend of it all and this is the story of spring-heeled jack (gasps) i love spring-heeled jack do you know spring-heeled jack yeah what how yeah from astonishing legends (laughs) oh okay (laughs) well 
it's I'm probably going to give an abridged version story. compared to okay. I, Anything, Astonishing Legends. I feel like all their episodes are just like four to six hours. <laughs> yeah uh yeah so anything you tell will be abridged of astonishing legend it's yeah no matter, well i've also no been i've been trying to shorten my stories too recently so i just because i feel like i it's a little overboard every now and then with the details so uh I definitely an abridged version so i think that's probably appreciated by most people um on our not not you shortening your stories but us um limiting our talking so. no i i i'm trying my best so i'm trying to keep everything offended I'm, I feel like I'm just, I'm going through a phase where I feel like if it's not necessary, don't, you know, mm, interesting. Ling- don't linger. Don't Because li- I feel like for, uh, for uh, there was, it was years ago now, but I feel like there, there was a phase where people had said that like, I wasn't giving enough detail. So then I tried really hard, but then my stories got freakishly long. And so I'm just like, you know what, let's just do whatever the fuck I want to do. Short so and sweet. Yeah. See, that's exactly why but I know I'm I not need gonna... to stay off Reddit because we take everything too personally. I have and- not. I have not been on Reddit in months, but I I have been going through stuff behind the scenes where I'm just like overthinking everything about right. myself. So I was just like, you know what? This is like, I love everyone and I appreciate obviously our audience and I love working with you, but like, I just got to like, just do whatever's going to make me happy at this point. Absolutely. So I'm trying to set boundaries everywhere, Amen. including including the things I love doing. So one of my boundaries is I'm just going to do whatever the fuck I want. And I feel like I was... <laughs> I was doing, um, I mean, I was doing like eight hours of research a night on notes and then it ended up just taking so much time to get through them. So anyway, trying to shorten them. I'm still doing, uh, you know, my, my due diligence on, on research, but I'm, you know, backing off and giving myself some, I love that mental health. I love that. Okay, so Spring Heel Jack, uh, the a very abridged version compared to whatever Astonishing Legends has to offer. It would have if, been no matter what. You could have done an eight hour story, and it probably would have still been abridged from their version. So it's probably okay. it, let's <laughs> consider our show um, just like uh, the commercial version of the, the, the <laughs> yeah. teaser trailer. It's of like Astonishing the trailer. Legends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. So here is a quote about uh, Spring Hill Jack from a historian named Mike Dash. It started with a ring at a gate and ended with a demonic laugh. Oh, oh, what? Yuck. And uh, that is foreshadowing a story I will tell later about Spring Hill Jack. So Spring Hill Jack is a folklore slash haunting in Victorian England. This is in 1837, which is the start of the Victorian period, which also was like during this time was also a big. Um, this was around the same time as the spiritualist era. Oh, sure. Sure. Um, I don't know if that played into people being more, Mm. you know, willing to believe this stuff. Cause this this seems kind of not believable. (laughs) Far-fetched. A little far-fetched, but I guess it, it, I would love to see a, like a psych study on like mob mentality or something, because eventually, I don't know mob mentality or group think or whatever the right word is, but, um, cause eventually like all these towns just start kind of falling for it. So I, sure. I wonder what the, what the science is there, but it's 1837 and this is the first sighting of Spring Hill Jack. So the rumors of Spring Hill Jack are that this started as a nickname for a random ghost that was said to be haunting the countryside. Oh. So if there was a, I don't know if something was like messing with your crops or if you saw a shadow run across the field, that was unexplainable. They would just be like, Oh, that's a ghost. That's a ghost. And this was before he had the name spring kill. Oh, I see. Okay. It was just, Oh, that's the ghost of the countryside, which (laughs) what an honor. I feel like that's the (laughs) mayor of ghost town or something. Um, but so for example, in the town of Barnes, there was regularly seen this phantom of a large white bull. Apparently. Oh, like I feel like that, I feel like one person said something like that and there's no way everyone ran with it right away. I feel like they're, I don't know what the situation was. It's a pretty wild claim. (laughs) Like, I feel like to say, oh, I saw a white bull and then other people in town are just like, oh my God, me too. Like what? Yeah, it seems pretty, again, far-fetched. Someone's someone's lying. Yeah. (laughs) I don't know Someone just wants to be part of the story and it's okay. I get that, you know? Even if a real white bull ran rampant in the town of Barnes, why is everyone calling it a ghost? You know, I mean, they're probably like you or me, where we're like, 
<laughs> it's got to be a phantom. Be. It must be phantom. So, uh, okay, so we're starting strong. So the town of Barnes saw this big white bull everywhere, and they thought it was a ghost. In another town called East Sheen, there were reports of this large phantom bear. Oh, what? So there's just it's like, like a like, whole circus. <laughs> also, like, could there are there bears in England, or like, couldn't there just be a bear? And they're just like, oh, it's a ghost. Like, what? Yeah, that's kind of. It goes back to the bull thing. Like, maybe it was just maybe it was a polar bear. Ma- you know what? Zoo. You're right. Well, that's it. The end. That's the, end. the show. <laughs> Uh, so there are reports of a phantom bear and, uh, he is, here's, here's where it goes up a notch. Cause they're like, oh, you have a bull. Well, we have a bear and a bear is more believable, but just to really throw a curveball at everybody, he is now randomly attacking women. Oh, that was their, that was their story in East Sheen. They were like, oh. there's this bear. He is violently attacking everyone. He especially loves women. Ooh. Um, and here's the thing, though. People who were looking for proof could never find it because there was never a victim anyone actually knew. Oh. It was always, <laughs> it was always. Oh, my friend was telling me that they knew someone who knew someone, and she got attacked by this phantom. A hundred percent. Yep. You know I know what I mean? How that goes. Oh yeah. So no actual solid proof. It is all uh, con- conjecture. Is that the right word? Yeah, or like anecdotal, almost. Anecdotal. Like everyone has a story. Another town called Hampton, they reported seeing a ghost too. And this ghost was a soldier. Okay, mm-hmm. that one I believe a little more. Yeah. Except he has Freddy Krueger metal claw shaped gloves. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. They're like, yeah, we have one. It's a soldier. Wait, you guys have a bear and a bull? Um, Well, ours like, has claws too. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's like, oh shit, we really got to up the ante on our fake story. <laughs> um, so he, they ha- he had metal claw shaped gloves and spring shoes. And spring Ew. shoes is just... Do you know what spring shoes no, are? No, I'm thinking like moon sho- moon boots or something. I thought the same thing. Don't you worry. Because, <laughs> I mean, you think sh- shoes with springs. like Trampoline shoes. <laughs> yeah, moon boots. And moon so, boots. Um, no, it's just another word for basically like, you know, like the classic witch, like a boot that a witch would wear where it's like black with the, oh, the sure. lace and like the heel. Yeah, sure. Like a, a classic Victorian boot. Those were just called spring shoes. Oh, okay. I would I never have known that. I know. I don't know why. Maybe you just wore them in spring. I don't understand. Oh, but I didn't even think of that. I have. I'm making. I have no fucking clue why they're called spring shoes. I could have done a deep dive, and like I said, again, I'm trying to keep take it short, care so. of yourself. We don't. Yeah. We don't need the whole history. We can Google for the shoes if we're really. If interested. there's a if there's a deep dive worth deep diving, I will be diving in. Head Which first, shoes? But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which yeah, shoes yeah. are the one? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, would wear these Freddy Krueger claws and spring shoes. So, ew. Uh, so between this one town having a bull, the bull actually, I think, is the most curious one and somehow kind of fades into existence and we hear less of that. Oh, but okay. between the story of the phantom bear attacking people, especially women, and this soldier with claws and spring shoes, and, and all these stories happening in different towns, basically all of these rumors start spreading throughout other towns and all these stories start combining and collapsing. Like, so it just through a game of telephone, some people are now seeing bears with claws and sold. Like, it's so soldiers bears attacking it, women bears in and spring shoes <laughs> on each paw, <laughs> Freddy Krueger in heels. And so, like, um, it's just it, it becomes like its own morphed rumor that kind of just seeps across all the towns. And Got so, it. from from this point on, other towns are now claiming to see any combination of this, and it slowly morphs into a universal phantom that all these towns are seeing of a soldier with metal claw shaped gloves and spring shoes. However, he's also attacking women Mm. um, or he's attacking people, especially women. And he can shape shift into animals, including a bear. Okay. I see. So it is the same now. It's sort of like, Oh, it's the same spirit. It's just manifesting in different clawed ways. Uh huh. Uh huh. So, okay. Okay. Uh, He's now this metal armored man, and that is why he is uh, known as Steel Jack. Oh. So, I know it's Spring Hill Jack, but first it's Steel Jack. Interesting. And just this is where I do a mini, mini deep dive on the name Jack back in like the old Victorian era, because Jack was kind of their version for the name John Doe at the time. I see. Okay. That makes sense. Uh, it was also a, a name that was used a lot as like a nickname for people who are big tricksters or liked liked a good case of tomfoolery 
Ooh. you'd be called a jack something so and uh, yeah so, like even like jack of all trades or mm-hmm. like okay okay oh so jack because it was like john doe and it was just like such a uh it was just like such a general name mm-hmm. but like ha- you had to put no effort into coming up with a name that's why a lot of folklore that je- that started from that time period um or a lot of stories that came from that time period they're all jacks like jack and the oh. beanstalk oh. jack jack be nimble jack frost oh my also, like, god that's jack so interesting and jack the ripper john <gasps> doe M, that's so interesting. I had no idea. Okay. And that was my mini fun fact situation. Well, honestly, worth it. And I loved every second of it. And I want to say, too, uh, that uh, where was I going with this? I swear this mom brain thing is real. Like, apparently, your gray matter and your brain changes when you give birth. And I feel like, like my permanently? Brain... Is this yes. just who you are now? It just like chain morphs. And I feel like I'm losing my mind more than usual. Um, the Jack thing, the name Jack. Wow, I had such a fun Jack fact. the Ripper is what I was going to say. Or no, I said before that. Jack Christine. Be Nimble, Jack and Jill, Jack Frost, Jack wow, and Lantern. That's a lot of Jack. Oh, I Jack know what I was going to say. Oh, okay. What? Sorry. Thank you. Um, so I almost feel like today, or at least for our generation, the name is Bob. I feel like that's always like the go-to name. Like the number <laughs> of people who've written and said like, oh, we just named the ghost Bob. Like, I just feel like every ghost is just like Bob or... Uh, I feel like, like Bob is maybe the American Jack. The American one. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Because I would still... I mean, we still use John Doe, but that's very like um, like paperworky. It's yeah, not... Yeah, I feel like that's more in a true crime sense of like finding a body and all that. Yeah. But I feel like if you're like, oh, let's call him Bob. I feel like every... At least when I was a kid, everything... Yeah. You just name it Bob. And yeah. um, my stepdad has like a, a little... <laughs> pamphlet or we went through his contacts and his phone and he had like 16 different bobs and they were all different names so there was farmer no we have farmer bob there was i was like <laughs> who's actually named bob by the who, way <laughs> who is bob uh but then there's he has tv bob he has electrician bob he has um well hey bob the builder bob that's, the builder he has that's our jack the beanstalk bob. so i feel like bob is a very like universal kind of just name anyway that's all so that is the very short history of jack mm. um and that is why he ended up being called Steel Jack because he was a random dude that was dressed in metal and some stories just had him with metal claws, but he was still Steel Jack. So as the lore of Steel Jack went through the UK, people claimed to see him just attacking random people because oh. that was kind of what the the original story was with this bear attacking women. And it just became like, there's this random dude dress in metal attacking people across all of our towns and we have to be worried about this Which random is man terrifying it is terrifying and it is very i don't know do you know what time period jack the ripper was not to put you on the spot I there i feel like it was the same time Maybe people were just scared of just something bad happening to them, which is like totally valid. Yeah. And um, eight, okay, so, it was eight later. Sorry, eighteen eighty eight. Uh, so, okay. So it was it was later. Well, like people, half okay. a century later. Whoops. I see. That's fine. I knew it was eighteen hundreds, and in my mind, I'm like, it's all the same. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know that it's not, but you know, as someone says, like, oh, we were born in nineteen nineties. That's basically nineteen thirties. Same. No, no, you're totally right. Like, it does not equate, but. Oh well. <laughs> So as the lore of Steel Jack goes through the UK, everyone's starting to come up with stories that he's attacking people. And the first one that really sticks is that Steel Jack has attacked this, uh, has attacked this carpenter in London, ironically, on Cutthroat Lane. <laughs> okay, well. So way to start a story. You're I don't move even know somewhere. That's probably not the one to do it. Not the and place to go. Did Cutthroat Lane really exist, or was this just for the story? This because sounds like a nursery rhyme, like. Instead of like, the, do you know the muffin man who lives on Drury Lane? It's like, do you know Jack the, with the witchy you know shoes Steel's- who lives on Cutthroat Lane? Or who kills on Cutthroat Lane? <laughs> who kills on Cutthroat Lane? Hang on. I love that. Thank uh, you. <laughs> yeah, but like also then I want to, that immediately makes me want to deep dive into who is naming streets like that. Cutthroat? Like, throat? like what? I mean, I wonder who if Who pitched that? And they were like, oh yeah, that one's good. I wonder if it's like. Oh, maybe the mayor of Ghost Town had this say in it, you know? <laughs> maybe the forgotten white bull that runs rampant in town. <laughs> He's like, remember me? No. <laughs> so, so according to this story, the carpenter actually almost won the fight but uh, against Steel Jack. But then something we never hear about again, Steel Jack had like two random 
ghost friends on call who what? came in and like who like came in and helped him beat up the carpenter. And so, so the carpenter ended yeah. up losing the fight because three phantoms got him all at once. I do sort of feel like this is the carpenter being like, no, I almost had him, but like I was outnumbered. And it's like, you should see the other guy yeah, until exactly. his buddies came around. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like, really? Were there three of them or did you just lose the fight? Exactly. So mm. uh, that's one version we never hear about again. Also, I don't know if the carpenter was real or not, but it sounds like he straight up died. So I feel like we should be. Oh, yeah, I guess lose the fight doesn't sound very good, like a good end right? result. I mean, maybe he just got really beat up and like. I don't and know. also maybe like he'd had an accident at his carpenter job and he just like was embarrassed. And he was like, no, 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 steel cut Jack on me. Or... <laughs> it was three guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so people freaked out right away. He, I, I guess he must have been somewhat real or people, it felt more close to home because this is the one that freaked people out mm. the most. And they started looking for real help from like h- people higher up in town, like politicians mm. and officials. And all the authorities refused, refused to help. And one, probably because this seems silly, mm-hmm. but um, two, it apparently became understood that the upper class was not helping the working class. It seemed uh-huh. like you'll see more as, as time goes on. But it, I got to seems... say that's a, that's a shocking turn of events that I could never have seen coming. Ain't that right? Ain't it something? <laughs> so, uh yeah, apparently they just were like, oh, these people, no, no, no. And then they like smoked a cigar or drank a martini or something. Absolutely. Rich. Both of those, I think. <laughs> something rich. <laughs> um, and so in 1837, the Morning Chronicle had an article come out that said uh, it said that some thought that Jack, this was a real plot to us because I think they'd been reaching out to the wealthy for so long and they weren't getting responses. So this article comes out that says oh we think that jack could actually be a real person not a ghost Mm -hmm. and he could just be in disguise and just like wreaking havoc on towns you know what that's very interesting oh sorry continue your thought no no no. go for it i was just gonna say because you mentioned that this was around the spirituality or spiritualism one of the waves of spiritualism and there was all that kind of hullabaloo where you would go to a seance and someone would be like draped in white or have like gauze on them and everyone would be like it's a phantom and I wonder if like (laughs) just this guy could just dress up as like a ghost and people were like oh that must be a ghost you know what I mean I'm not trying to I don't think people from that time period were stupid I think it was a new it was a new totally they didn't know what was going on anything could blow their mind because special effects was like had never been heard of before right right but I do think that you really could have gotten away with fucking anything and people would have been like it's clearly a ghost and it's like hmm yeah. I don't know. <laughs> like nowadays, I, know. I think we'd have a more skeptical understanding of that. But I mean, as people who are not skeptical at all, uh, I think we'd have a more skeptical understanding. <laughs> I feel like if e- even you and me saw someone dressed in gauze, we yeah. would be like, that's not a ghost. That so, person is uh, probably someone we need to keep outside and lock yeah, the doors. But if, I don't if, think if it's we a ghost. don't, if we're not believing it, I, I am confused how other people are believing it. But then I think about like, Again, back then they had no awareness of special effects and makeup. Absolutely. And, and I think like in a hundred years, people are going to look at us and be like, what a bunch of dummies, you know? Oh, so, for sure. So for sure. I, there's like no room to judge. But yeah, I, I wonder if that, if it was actually a person who was, you know, dressing up. Well, I feel like that if it's, if Steel Jack existed, I would argue it's probably a real person dressed right? up before it's a ghost. And Which it's is scarier inter- almost scarier and it's also interesting that people back then were more quick to assume it was a real ghost versus it being a person good point i know it started as rumors of a ghost and so maybe people just like landed on the ghost thing and stuck with it and then this like attacker just like went with that theory and was like i'll just let them believe i'm a ghost like who knows? it could have also been maybe i know that we're talking about it it could have been uh, stories of a ghost and someone was like oh that's like a silly story let me copycat it and be great the real point. steel jack you know great point anyway so people were starting to get ideas that maybe this wasn't a ghost and maybe it was someone dressed up as steel sure. jack um and here is a quote from that article some scoundrel disguised in a bear skin and wearing spring shoes has been seen jumping to and fro before foot passengers in the neighborhood of Lu- lewisham 
Lewisham, Lewisham, and has in one or two instances greatly alarmed females. So the most important part to all that is note that they suggest that Jack jumps to and fro. I, I was wondering. Yeah. Yeah. And shockingly in spring shoes that don't have springs. So like what is happening here? No wonder. I mean, I don't know what they expected. They expected me to understand that. Also, maybe because I didn't do a deep dive, maybe there are springs in those shoes. I don't I'm... think so. I feel like no. we would know about a, a time in history where clothes, where your shoes went doing. Where you had doing. trampoline shoes. Yeah, I, feel right? like that's, I feel like that's something I should have learned about. I mean, yeah. I don't know. So, I don't know either. If that's the truth, that's about to be my new celery vase and I'm going to own a million of them. <laughs> so, okay. So note that it says that he jumps to and fro because this really took off this one line uh, it was similar. I mean, it, I mean, it, people just ran with that. Like, really? Oh, he jumps. Got it. Okay. He jumps. <laughs> okay. We can remember <laughs> that. And so soon another story comes out about steel Jack crashing a carriage by stepping in its way and causing it to swerve. And he laughs that he created this chaos. And then oh. he escapes by jumping over a nine foot wall with ease <laughs> because okay. now he can jump. He can oh. jump. Sure. Another wow. story comes out about a bartender named Polly who was attacked by him. And she actually was the first person who could give more detail. Um, again, Polly could have just gone to a reporter and said, this happened to me and it not be true, but mm -hmm. whatever. Maybe she was attacked by an actual person. Uh, but she says that it was in fact steel Jack and he smelled like sulfur. Ew. Apparently with his metal claws, he ripped her shirt and cut her stomach and then, with ease, he jumped over a fence and escaped. Okay. Okay. I mean, okay. I'm thinking about this nine-foot wall still, and I'm I'm wondering, like, if they swerve and they crash their carriage and they're, like, they see him, like, run toward the wall and maybe they are, like, scrambling around, they look over and he's gone. Maybe he just jumped and, like, climbed the wall and they didn't uh, see it. You know what I mean? I, yeah. Maybe he, like, there was actually, like a ladder that blended into the fence very well and he, he just he <laughs> just like climbed right up say you're like six feet and you're athletic and there's a nine foot fence no oh, that's pretty i high. guess you know, pretty high. i don't know maybe you just have a lot of upper body strength yeah. and you could do like the push right the push. or you could uh like maybe jump off something and i don't know i don't know anyway i'm just wondering like or maybe they exaggerated it was like actually a six foot fence and they were like oh it was nine whole feet you know who knows but i feel but, like if you say nine you might as well make it ten you might as well that's true but maybe nine was more believable because ten is like okay we're rounding ten here. sounds like you're exaggerating yeah hmm interesting hmm. that's thoughts thoughts we have okay so uh stories like this start spreading everywhere including the jumping situation so that just makes it, it even scary. more frightening like it is a freaky thought I, especially because i can't do it i can't jump Certainly you know who not. can't you know who can't fucking jump allison that i swear to god her feet have never left the ground i've <laughs> seen i've seen her try to jump and it's hilarious it's like i don't it's like i think she actually doesn't have the skill like, okay it, i feel like i need to mention this because someone's gonna bring it up that knows me but when i was little can you not jump either so when i was little <laughs> I used to apparently my mother loves the story I hate it I would just uh I was so proud of myself and I'd go look mama I can jump and I would just like go like this and like raise my arms and not jump and okay, just kind of like, like stand up one that's hysterical and two as an adult I think that's what Allison does yes and so and then she always said like look mama I can jump anytime I did any sort of sporty activity or played a sport I'd be like, wow, you know, I won my tennis match. And she'd go, look, mama, I can jump. And I was like, okay, <laughs> I'm never going to like outlive this. Anyway, that that's just what that reminds me of. But um, I can't okay, jump either, the second, I guess. The second your baby is at the jumping milestone, make sure that she learned something that wasn't from you. Make sure Honestly, please teaches her how to jump. I got to make sure my mom doesn't catch sight of anything, you know, because <laughs> she's going to never let her live it down. And I, I can't, I can't have two generations of that. Well, you know the episode of The Office when Phil, they're like they're all trying to take like a group picture and like they're trying to jump at the same time. Yeah. And then Philip Phyllis sh not Philip Phyllis shows how she like can't jump and yeah. she like that's what Allison looks like when she tries to that's, jump. It's, mm, it's that's it's, the one. It's, it's, I think it's very endearing, but like the girl cannot jump. Like, I'm sure if, she loves that story. If it's, <laughs> to, if it's like to save my life, I'm not making it. Like she plays it tennis way. really well, though, for what it's worth. She's a great tennis player, but she's not a great jumper. jumper? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, Allison, when you're listening to this one day, um, I'm 
sorry. But you can't jump in. You know it. I tried to commiserate with you, uh, but my version was from when I was two. So I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know if they're going to equate. But I probably I I haven't tried to jump in a long time. I probably can't either. So there's only one fact we've gotten from the story of Steel Jack so far. It's that it was definitely not Allison or Christine. Like, because (laughs) if jumping were at play, we're out. You're in the clear. No prime suspects today. I didn't do it. (laughs) So, so many uh, people started freaking out about Steel Jack, including now the fact that he is a jumper with Mm. metal claws um, and turns into a bear sometimes and he wears bear skin. Um, But so many people are freaking out that it gets to a point where people are getting pissed at the wealthy and the rich for not helping. Mm -hmm. And so a a letter, several letters got sent to the Lord Mayor of London to Uh be like, why the fuck aren't you helping us? But this one in particular really takes the cake. This is from 1838. And I could read the whole thing, but I'm just for time, I'm going to... um, uh what's the word shorten it condense it who cares yes i'm gonna i'm gonna keep it keep it tight so the letter accuses the rich uh of not helping the town because the rich are steel jack and they are all dressing up to terrorize the working class i was wondering if we'd be going here that the wealthy aren't helping because they're the ones responsible so now now we've hit conspiracies my friend Mm -hmm. and the letter also states that By this point, several women had been attacked and they were so traumatized that they may never recover. And the press must know that the rich are involved because they're not they're They must be getting paid off to Mm. like not write about Steel Jack as often as they should be writing about Steel Jack. And so uh, this letter becomes public knowledge that the Lord Mayor himself saw this. And uh, it's like a public crisis. Like people are freaking out and Steel Jack is officially now seen by the people as a real person instead of it being lore anymore. Now people are like truly afraid of a person that is pretending to be Steel Jack because it's someone from the upper class trying to terrorize them. I mean, that is scary. And I mean, whether it's the upper class aside, like if it is a person who is like cutting women's stomachs and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, oh, that's it's freaky. terrifying. And now the rumors are going really crazy because there are rumors of Steel Jack now attacking just fucking everyone under mm. the sun. Speaking of the sun, my next point is that uh, there was an article in The Sun, hey. which is like n- known to be like a very crazy tabloid magazine. So keep right. that in mind. But uh, they alleged that the townspeople were right and that the wealthy were up <laughs> to it. So they are just stirring the goddamn pot. I love that for them. And here's the twist that the son used. The son says, so the wealthy were into it or the wealthy were a part of this, but it wasn't actually, excuse me. It wasn't actually the wealthy upper class uh, authorities. It was their children. Oh, and said that the children were up to it. I'm, I'm personally confused if it was like the children were, it was a bet or maybe their parents had told them to do it or it was uh i don't know what the conspiracy theory is about how the children are they were involved. just like troublemakers or they're just being like shitty privileged spoiled kids and right. just had a reason to ransack the town i guess um but so the article says that they were doing this with hopes of earning five thousand quid which i guess is the equivalent to half a million dollars today whoa and i and i guess the reward part was like maybe they were trying to stir up trouble and then they could be they could then be the hero of their own crime and like get this money or something that's kind of the vibe i'm getting yeah it sounds like Um, the the sun was just kind of like (laughs) it sounds like the sun just fucking made up a story and like didn't care about the all the the pothole potholes in their story right right uh so they the son also said that the children were doing this because they wanted to scare people wreak havoc and then quote destroy the lives of not less than 30 human beings what (laughs) what a very specific mission like was that a story they picked before this all happened or did they happen to have already attacked that many so now we're assuming that was their goal that that was it right that's okay at any rate, so far at, at the time of this article, they had uh, attacked 80. No, not 80. Holy shit. They had not. They had attacked eight bachelors. They called them old bachelors. So I think that just means like old single men. I guess um, so. They attacked eight old bachelors. 
this is a quote, eight old bachelors, 10 old maids, six ladies maids, and as many servant girls as they could. This is definitely a nursery rhyme or a card game. Like eight <laughs> old maids, 10. This is where old maid came from. Yeah. It's, I mean, it really, I'm like, what on earth is this description? But wow. Okay. So. So this Sorry. is all, this this whole story is from the sun. So like we can pretty much guess uh-huh. that this is like not the truth. Fabricated. But, they, <laughs> but it's just it goes to show that like pretty much anything went in terms of driving a narrative and the sun sure. just ran with this particular version of the Steel Jack conspiracy. Right. Okay. Interesting. So now the first time it's, uh, he goes from Steel Jack to Spring Heeled Jack is in 1838, a whole year later in uh the the penny satirist they were the first to call him spring heel jack um and the name just stuck and here's another fun fact apparently once he got called spring heel jack people started using jack as like a not the name jack but the character of spring heel jack they started oh. using him um as like a mascot on their posters and to sell spring shoes like <gasps> he became like derical which, like, I think it's, like, low-key fucked up, but I also think, like, what a what a way at the time to be timely. No, you know? you're totally right, like, to ride that wave of, like, what's timely and what's, like, on trend. I mean, wow. I mean, you're right. Now that I think about it, it is kind of fucked up because, like, if this person is literally attacking uh, people, yeah, people, right. But, but if but, it was just wow. a random phantom that was a rumor throughout town, like the, uh, then I would be like totally on board. It's like, oh, you're just keeping up with a trend, you know? That's for sure someone now who is like a millennial in marketing at, at like Wendy's or one of these like Twitter yeah. accounts that's really popular. Like that person knew what they were doing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've, yeah, I 100%. <laughs> and so would... Keep in mind, now everyone is pissed at the upper class because the conspiracy has blended across towns that they're up to something. Sure. Still, nothing has come from the officials in helping the town about this crazed man until rumors of Spring Hill Jack started uh, coming about where he was attacking the rich. (gasps) And then those... Those rumors seeped into their social circles, and all of a sudden, the rich uh, were scared. Oh, no. So <laughs> so later that year, this is like the, the first um, uh, rich family or upper class family to be affected personally by Spring Hill Jack. In 1838, there was an 18-year-old girl named Jane Alsup. Alsup? Um, who was part of a rich family and she was at home and she heard the bell down by the gate ringing Mm. and she hears this man screaming and he (laughs) says for heaven's sake bring me a light we have caught spring hill jack here in the lane whoa so she's like she's like oh shit they caught him so like i gotta go help so she runs down with this candle because that's the only version of light at the time bring me a light (laughs) bring me a light quick and then like as you're running the candle blows out and you're like "Ah!" you gotta hold your hand over it like i'm just (laughs) imagining like having to keep running back into the house to relight to relight it yeah um so she runs down with this candle the man grabs it from her and from the candle light, when he holds it close enough to him, he reveals that he is spring Jack. <gasps> and she fell for his trap. He lured her out? That's so fucked up. And he lunges for her. <gasps> he rips at her clothes. He rips at her hair. He rips at the rest of her. But she escapes and she runs into the house. And I guess somehow spring Jack is quick behind her, quick on her heels. And uh, as she locks the door, he starts banging on the <gasps> door, trying to get in. That's scary. Which makes, it's scary, especially because now that we officially, if this story is true, we know that Spring Hill Jack was a real person. Because right. this really, if he were a phantom, what's a door in your I mean, like, like a door isn't in your way. When That's you're a what, it, exactly. Especially if you have all these weird claws and you can shape shift. I mean, I, also I in like your personal experience, bed sheets didn't get in the way. You know <laughs> right. what I'm saying? Good so, point. like, good point. And, like, not only that, but you would think in your person in your story it'd be like he could walk through walls and walk through bed sheets but somehow he made you walk yeah through a bed i don't sheet, love which is, that you know I don't so love no the matter what we're not winning turning of the tables here no so jane's family calls the police and she describes him as usual as everyone else has been describing him wearing a metal helmet and claws but oh. she also says that he's wearing a white oil skin which is basically like it looked like a big fisherman jacket it was like oh. from like goes all the way down to your calves okay uh and he breathed blue fire okay wait 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 okay 
And he had red eyes, but the breathing blue fire is even scarier to me. Yeah. I wonder if that was kind of a... I wonder. I wonder. I feel so like it's not my place to say it was a lie or made up, but it seems a little wild to me. I feel like she almost like finally convinced the rich and like then she had to say that. And yeah, she went a little far with it, you know? Now they're like, you really had, we should have done baby steps into this. Yeah, like, yeah. The you blue had fire, me until no then. one else has even mentioned blue fire. And now you're coming to your yeah. rich family and our, your rich social circles and saying he's also breathing blue fire. Okay. Mm, skeptical. So officials don't believe her description, but her Aww. father posts a reward for any information and police round up whoever they can that may have been in the area during the attack. Particularly, I guess there were some drunk men that were joking about Spring Hill Jack mm. nearby, and so they thought maybe it could have been them. But none of these people were identified to be Spring Hill Jack, and the case ran cold. But days later... Another 18-year-old named Lucy Scales, um, her and her sister were walking down an alley in town when they saw what they thought was a woman in a bonnet. But as they got closer, it was a man in a helmet. Mm -mm. And they were like, oh, shit, this guy looks a little spring heel Jackie to me. Mm -hmm. Well, they're still walking, and eventually he turns and sees them, and he breathes fire at, into Lucy's face. Ah. And then she, like, falls over and has a seizure. Oh, God. So now he's getting more creatively dangerous i guess like i hadn't heard of that one before but now he's she's he's like causing seizures which is terrible i mean the fire thing again i wonder if if she mm -hmm. was just copying the last story or if like he actually had some sort of mechanism i don't know i don't know but um so as she falls the sister that was with her screams their brother hears them and comes to get them and both siblings watch as the spring hill jack jumps Onto a roof with ease and oh. just takes off. Oh, okay. His jumping's still going strong, I see. He's jumping and he's breathing fire and uh, that's about it. Uh, police looked into this fire breathing thing and they just didn't know what to do with that. They were like, this is a real curveball. <laughs> so um, they looked into medical fields, like science fields, and they looked into theater in the theater industry interesting they were like what could this be like prop magic or something mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah well, like fire breathing and yeah. so uh basically both groups had more or less the same theory i mean in different words they were saying oh someone is mixing alcohol with a flammable chemical in their mouth okay okay um and so now they're thinking like, okay, this guy is some sort of fire breathing performer, or he's at least into like chemistry and knows like what would cause this. So now they're looking for, uh, they're looking for basically someone that looks like Spring Hill Jack, but also might be in the science or theater world. Okay. Um, who also has a violent streak, I guess. And also who can jump like Superman, but okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 Don't worry about that part. <laughs> so, so now they're having the search parties, but the SHJ, as I put him in my notes in this part, uh, the Spring Hill Jack was never found despite these search parties. One of the people in the search parties, by the way, just to throw a, a name in there, was the Duke of Wellington. Oh. <laughs> he, oh. Who straight up like beat Napoleon. He was like ready to, guns a-blazing, he was ready to take down Spring Hill Jack. <laughs> um, and He's like, what's next? Napoleon? <laughs> done. He was like, if I can take down a plane, I can take down a fire breathing SHJ. jumper. <laughs> An SHJ. So although nobody could find him during the official searches, people still reported seeing him when they were on their own, which was very convenient, I yeah, suppose. Suspicious. So the rumors are still going strong, but no one's able to find him until no until like nobody's nearby. Okay. Still in 1838, Spring Hill Jack was seen again in someone's garden, this time as a bear, which makes me think someone just had a bear in their garden, and now we're calling it Spring Hill Jack, okay? <laughs> um, and I guess the bear chased the dog around for a while. The dog's fine. They, it was just like, it really could have been a bear trying to chase a dog, and then the owner freaked out and watched the bear escape, but... It sounds like they were like, oh, it was a ghost the whole time. And Spring Hill Jack was tormenting my dog by, like, chasing him around. Right. And, um, but anyway, the bear eventually jumps over the garden wall and escapes. And okay. there are many stories like this of, like, a random animal coming into someone's property. And oh, interesting. Them saying it's Spring Hill Jack. So it's becoming this thing where you can just blame anything for any. It sounds you like blame it. anything for him. Yeah. 
And not only did these stories continue to spread, but there were others that were inspired by copycats trying to be Spring Hill Jack, including one man who dressed in a mask and a sheet and he tried to scare two women, mm. but they recognized his voice as the doorman at their own home. And what so- an idiot. These two women chased him down and got the police involved, and he was fined. But he was only fined, like, basically what's today $400. What for like an asshole. Terror, for terrorizing someone during, like, a real crisis Like, in assaulting them, like, attacking people. I hate, I hate that. I know. I wish I were more surprised, but whatever. Well, the biggest suspect in hindsight, um, or maybe not in hindsight, but one of the suspects they were thinking it could have been, uh, of who Spring Hill Jack might have been was the Marquis or Marquise Marquise I think it's Marquis the Marquis of Waterford um aka Who's the mad that? the mad Marquis was his name apparently he was known oh, as the mad Marquis shit because he lived in the area at the time he was disliked by a lot of people he didn't particularly like women and he was said to pull a lot of pranks okay um, so this guy and he probably had money to buy like bear skins and weird shit like that or to pay people off when oh. people maybe got on his tail I yeah don't like that but the thing that makes him seem like he's not a suspect is he ended up moving to ireland and after he moved there were still rumors of spring hill jack running oh. around oh but he could have moved to ireland and then like rumors were just happening that's like, true too yeah um so over the years, reports of Spring Hill Jack have faded away. The last big story was in 1877 when a soldier apparently heard metal scraping nearby and he saw a cloaked man breathe fire at him. Oh, gosh. And then the man took off. And then the last time Spring Hill Jack was seen in 1904 in Liverpool and he was still jumping across buildings, even though it had been like 70 plus years. Wow. In the 1960s, one person came forward and said that they think a local man they knew was the one known as Spring Hill Jack because they knew a guy who was leaping from buildings all the way back then. <laughs> that sounds familiar. <laughs> Here, Yeah, he was like, wait, that guy? Okay. Oh. Um, but apparently, this is a quote from, from this witness. Uh, he was a local man slightly off balance mentally, which is like, what an original way to say that. It was slightly um, off balance. Okay. <laughs> he had a form of religious mania and he would climb oh. onto the rooftops of houses crying out, my wife is the devil. Holy uh, shit. Oh my gosh. It's okay. a lot to unpack here that we're yeah. just ignoring. Yeah. They usually fetched police or a fire engine ladder to get him down. And as the police closed in on him, he would leap from one house roof to the next. And that's what gave rise to the Spring Hill Jack rumors. So they think that because this guy was just oh. evading police and calling out his wife, he maybe was the Spring Hill Jack. And he was like able to jump from uh, from from roof house to, to house. Yeah. yeah, which is creepy. I'll give him that. It would it be alarming. You know? I just wonder, though, like, maybe he was in like a line of brownstones or something and the roof just kept going. I like He just, maybe, kept... <laughs> he just jumped every now and then so it looked like he was bouncing between buildings. Well, I'd like to make a point once more that um, uh, I'd like it on the record that once again, Allison and I, off the list. Sorry. Off the list for I'm sure. I'm not jumping from roof to roof, no matter how close they are. Fair enough. Uh, <laughs> and Spring Hill Jack inspired characters for many future stories and plays, but one of them includes this vintage. I'm now obsessed with trying to collect all of them, by the way. So if what you know a guy, uh, Spring Spring Hill Jack was one of the characters used in this vintage printed series about the macabre called Penny Dreadful. Oh, I know Penny Dreadful. Yeah. There well, was a Penny Dreadful was also a TV show. Yeah, the TV show was, yeah. So it was inspired by, in the 1830s, they had this, like, basically like, like a zine. They're like little horror zines. Little horror zines. And it was, like, the first of its kind. Um, and spring Hill Jack remains one of the most notorious figures in Penny Dreadful, oh. as well as in Victorian lore. I freaking love that. Let me uh, give you a picture. I'll text you. I've seen some Penny Dreadful copies in, like, like a, I, this assume, is I assume they're replicas, but... Well, this is Spring Hill Jack and the Penny Dreadful. Oh, God. Oh, gosh. He, I love his white pants. Very Freddie Mercury. He looks like Freddie Mercury. He looks like early Batman, but a skeleton. I'm very but, confused. But also like with some pizzazz. You like know? he's, he's very flamboyant. I will say yeah, that. Yeah. If you're on YouTube, look at this. Um, and if you're not watching on YouTube, then we'll put it on Instagram. Yeah. Um, wow. But anyway, that is, uh, 
That is Spring Hill Jack. That is great, Em. I I didn't know a lot, most of that, I would say. Um, well, may, maybe I did at one point, but I certainly didn't I was going to say, I, I have a feeling As- Astonishing Legends mentioned it for sure. <laughs> they may not have gone, uh, done the deep dive on the name Jack, but who knows? Oh, know, right, right, right. You got me some good intel there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, there Very you Very good it. job, Em. Well, uh, I have an unsolved murder story for you today. Mm, okay. Yeah. Which is always, I feel like, uh, it's a genre that I like, and like is a relative term, but I like it because it leaves some room for theories and there's some mystery to it, but it is also very frustrating because I just want to know who did it. So I also do. I, I like playing right the puzzle guessing, master but yeah. also i'm just always mad at the end when i'll never get it when there's I'll no never justice know. yeah so i'm yeah. hoping that this one maybe gives us a little bit of like hope because at the end well i'll get there but this is the story of the lake Oconee murders okay and it took place in 2014 and m this is one of the most confounding cases i've ever heard of confounding okay totally i just cannot wrap my head around this oh okay it is so baffling i just i mean i can't wait to tell you about it okay oh my gosh okay well i'm hey i'm thrilled to be here folks yeah (laughs) yeah you you buckle up knuckle and buckle because i got uh, a tail (laughs) for you so this took place in 2014 when an elderly couple was murdered in their lake oconee home and Here's a quote that just, I mean, you you said a quote at the start of your Spring Hill Jack. I'm going to give you a quote to kind of give you a taste oh, of yeah. what, what this story becomes because it we start quickly. We, we jump in quickly. So here's a quote from the sheriff who um, becomes one of my favorite characters in this whole story. And he was leading the case and he said, quote, Mr. Derman was decapitated. We do not know the whereabouts of his head. Oh, well, I immediately know one big major plot line that happens in this story then. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You already got some intel, uh, some basic okay. So intel. something really fucking gruesome happened. I Very was, gruesome. I thought this was just going to be like a missing person. Well, you did say murders in the title. Hmm. But yeah, okay. it's it's definitely, I think that's why it's so confounding. Is it such a gruesome, brutal murder with like no fucking answers? You know what I mean? Like that's, So weird. It's almost like there's so much right in front of you but you can't answer it it's it's baffling so Uh, i was gonna say especially in 2014 i feel like i feel like i know this is so stupid but i just imagine when the stories are like somewhat recent i just get so much angrier that we don't have an answer because if it's like a story from like the early 1900s or something i'm just like okay well maybe they didn't have the same technology or maybe so much time has passed there's no way to find out now but when it's something so recent i'm like with all the technology we have, is there like what is going on? What's what the situation? What can be done? Yes, exactly, and that's why it's it's again so freaking baffling. So this took place in Lake Oconee, which is about eighty miles east of Atlanta, Georgia. So we're in Georgia. It's a nineteen hundred acre lake, and it's this like beautiful public recreation spot. Uh, and surrounding the lake are these just typical like your vacation homes owned by wealthy families who usually live elsewhere, and then have like a lake house, like a beautiful lake house. Sure. Um, A lot of the homes, for that reason, are empty most of the year because uh, people go back to their (laughs) day job, their regular homes, and then come here for their lake house summers. And so uh, a couple that didn't really have the scenario, they actually lived there full time, were 88-year-old Russell Dermond and his wife, 87-year-old Shirley Dermond. And they were full-time residents at the lake. So this couple has been described as the all-American grandma and grandpa, just like classic grandma, grandpa vibes, you know, elderly, Mm. just like happy couple. Russell was a World War II vet. Shirley was a stay-at-home mother for their four children. And according to their son, Brad, they met in college, love at first sight. They didn't date anyone else once they had met. And they had a 68-year marriage that was very solid. Um... They have very solid foundation. We're very happy and just content. And they apparently, according to their children, modeled that marriage to their children who also enjoyed comfortable lives in strong marriages. So this was just like a very stable, happy couple. 
Of course. So now it just has to be of a, course additionally horrific and tumultuous. And they they lit up every room. You know, of course, <laughs> <laughs> their smiles Aww. could light up the world. Uh, yeah, classic. They're just a happy elderly couple. So the Dermans had nine grandchildren, and both grandparents were just beloved by the whole family. Uh, and when he was in his 50s, Russell had invested in a series of Hardee's franchises, like the fast food Hardee's. Mm -hmm. And he made a good bit of money selling them. So once they had made this profit, they were able to retire to Lake Oconee, where they lived full time. They lived pretty unassuming lives, just happy, quiet lives. Uh, they're said to have been down to earth people. They didn't flaunt the money they had. Um, people said their house was the only giveaway as to their wealth. So, you know, they weren't driving like fancy cars and all this and showing off. Although it is mentioned that Russell did own some expensive things like he owned some Rolex watches. Um, and so maybe if somebody had spotted that as a target, like, oh, that man has money. Maybe that's where this attack came from. But anyway, mm. they seemed like pretty unassuming people. They also lived in an area with virtually no crime. And that's a quote. Wow. Uh, which, again, I feel like is a red flag in these stories. Like, a sleepy community. You know, it's always, right, it's right. always some sort of a cliche. Um, before this, according to the investigator, we had virtually no crime. None. So this was a gated community. It had its own private security team. And there is one problem here, which is that... There's this 1900 acre lake and you can't really control that. So while people coming by car had to pass a security checkpoint, you could just get in a boat and go across the lake without being, you know, stopped or without having to show any uh -huh. paperwork or security there was, badge. There was no like, like uh, on the shore security, exactly, I suppose. Exactly, exactly. So people could access the houses technically by boat if they really wanted to. Um, this had not been an issue before, but it seems like that might have been what happened. So the Dermans' house was right on the lake. It had immediate dock access. And in 2014, um, security was pretty lax. So, you know, it's not like they had some, like, really intense high security. Again, there was never any crime here. Basically, residents just needed a sticker on their car, and that would get them waved through. So contractors, handymen, and cleaning services often had their own stickers for just to get in and out. So, sure. you know, I mean, that does open it up to more people, uh, like a, a handyman or, or a maybe even like people service. or people, um, could make fake stickers. Yeah. Or take a sticker, I guess, from somebody and just put it mm -hmm. on their car. That's a good point. Yeah. I hadn't even thought of that. Or bar, yeah. Borrow someone's car who has right, a sticker. True. True. All they needed was that sticker. So they didn't need to show ID or anything like that. Um, so it was essentially not super hard to get past security or just skip security entirely by accessing through the, the lake. Now we get to the horrible part. So on Friday, May 2nd, 2014, the Dermans ran some errands as usual. Uh, there's security footage at a nearby grocery store showing Russell and he's smiling and in a good mood. He's leaving with a loaf of bread and some cucumbers. That's it. I, why is that precious? I don't know. I don't know, but it touches my heart. <laughs> it just feels like he was like not even like wasn't a big haul. Just had a had a fucking just vibe for a cucumber sandwich. That's, that's all he what wanted. I'm thinking right, just like a little butter, a little salt, a little cuke. Make I yourself mean, a Friday sandwich. And to be clear, this has nothing to do with his age since he's a little elderly. I just I think anyone walking absolutely. Any, I, I notice any time someone goes to the grocery store and just has like one thing in their hand. I'm like, totally. what are you? What are you here for? What are you like, up to? <laughs> like there, I've never. I've just it's so against. I've I've never been someone who can just run out real quick and pick one thing up. It's just unheard of. So. <laughs> The second I hear like this, this man is just having a pleasant day in a sleepy town. He's yeah. just got his cucumber sandwich ingredients. It's that's it. It's very and, and the fact that he's smiling on camera, like he's probably <sighs> seeing people he knows, like saying hi, you know, his usual errands. It's just very quaint and uh, makes it that much worse. Mm. So he has his loaf of bread at his cukes and he leaves the grocery store. And earlier, Russell had visited the bank to transfer money into a nursing home insurance plan. As usual, um, he had an annual premium that was due. So he went to the bank to fill that. Nothing out of the ordinary. 
So later on, investigators found the weekend edition of USA Today, which was delivered on Fridays inside the home. So the Germans must have brought it inside some point on Friday. So this is us building a timeline, basically. Russell had also opened an email from one of his children the same day. So basically, we do know the Germans were still alive on Friday. But unfortunately, they would not be seen alive again after this. Uh, okay. On Saturday, May 3rd, the Dermans' neighbors hosted a Kentucky Derby party that the Germans always attended, but mm. Shirley and Russell didn't show. And it was odd because they they weren't the type to not show up without a phone call and let them know they weren't coming. Um, but the neighbors weren't immediately worried. They waited about three days without hearing from the Germans before they finally said, like, we should go check on them. And they stopped by the house and found the door unlocked. And as somebody who tells these true crime stories, um, I just have to say, the second I'm worried about someone have a bad feeling and I show up and the door's unlocked, I'm not going in there. Somebody else has to go in there. You know yeah. what I mean? I'm not I'm not interested in seeing what's on the other side. Fair enough. If Fair I call enough. out and nobody answers, like, sorry. I feel like if I even have a gut feeling about something, I wouldn't even have checked to see if the door was... I wouldn't have even gone to the house. I would have just been like, oh, okay, so there's a problem immediately. So there's a problem. Somebody needs to check it out. And I don't think I'm um, psychologically prepared for this mission, you know? It's it's one of the sick blessings of having so much anxiety and paranoia. It's like, I don't think, I don't think you would be able to not survive 24 hours and me not know about it. I think right. I would have... I would have such a... I would be paranoid. I'd be like, she hasn't talked to me in 24 something's hours. Something's wrong. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, we're, we're in a fight. I'm we're either officially something's, in a fight. Either something's wrong or she's seen a ghost and is too afraid she's going to tell me and needs to <laughs> wait till we record on the podcast. <laughs> okay, but I would have a hunch at, at, that something was up. Definitely. Yeah, you would know something is up. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope you wouldn't immediately call the police because, again, um, it's probably that I saw a ghost. But you never Fair know. Enough. I'll um, wait 48 hours thank next time. You. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so they go and, of course, they go in the house because they're good neighbors who are probably well-adjusted psychologically, unlike me, and they don't think anything horrific can happen on the other side of this door. So they show up and nothing seems out of the ordinary until they enter the garage. And this is where they find Russell lying dead between his and Shirley's cars. And as you already know, he had been decapitated. Hmm with no head in sight right i mean what the fuck what the fuck so the shocked neighbor <sighs> called 911 while her husband observed the scene she told the emergency operator that shirley didn't seem to be in the house but someone was definitely dead and keep in mind like he doesn't have a head so it's like mm -hmm. at this point they can't even confirm that it's him but they know someone is dead uh the killer <sighs> this is gross just a warning the killer had wrapped towels around Russell's exposed neck so that mm. the blood didn't seep under the garage to mm -hmm. alert passersby. Yeah. Which is like, what a sick thing to have to think about. And I feel like a decapitating, like, that's, I mean, that's not an accident. No, like the, exactly. So someone, someone got there with an intention and, like, it had a plan of, like, oh, and I'll also have to have a bunch of towels nearby. Yeah, that's a great point. Like someone knew like, okay, well, I don't want, like, I want to decapitate this person, but I know that it adds multiple steps. Like, I don't want this to, you know, leak out of the garage and now or maybe, I need to stop the blood. Maybe the towels were theirs and he, maybe he really didn't see that coming and there was a lot of blood and he was like, oh shit, no oh, I'm shit. That's true. It could have been grabbing. a backup. Yeah. It could have been like a, a plan B or something. Um, so yeah, either way, pretty gross and pretty like thought out if like you thought, oh, I don't want this to alert anybody. So I'm just going to put these towels here. Interestingly, the garage was air conditioned. So decomposition hadn't really set in like it would have if he were outside. Um, and so again, without his head being there, investigators had to identify him via fingerprints. Mm. Um, and they did confirm, yes, this was Russell Dermond. Uh, the sheriff immediately involved the FBI, and this I just want to make a point that it wasn't because of like his wealth or his location or status, but because of the decapitation, because this is such a next level gruesome crime. Especially in a, a town like that. Especially in the context of this town. And so exactly. So they brought the FBI in. 
And investigators said the violence required a certain level of depravity that's rare. And I would say, yeah, I would argue you're probably right. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's rare, at least in this context of this small town. So meanwhile, they still don't know where Shirley is. And so now people are like, well, did Shirley have something to do with this? Is that why she's gone? Um, Which is obviously a disturbing thought for her family. Um, But then her family's also worried, like, maybe she's injured or she's been taken hostage. Uh, So they put her face and information on nearly every electronic billboard in Georgia. Um, Her son and her other family were desperate and, like, clinging to hope that maybe they would find her alive and well. Uh, But investigators at this point are at a loss. So this is where, oh, I already have creep. I already have a goose cam. Goose cam? Yeah, freaks me out. So... Uh, the the crime scene they responded to was pristine. They said the house looked barely lived in. Uh, laptops, Shirley's purse, their cars, the Rolex watches, jewelry, cash, nothing was missing. Nothing was out of place. Nothing had been robbed. There was no sign of forced entry. This is gross. The only thing that was moved was a lamp, which they had put in the garage for lighting, which I presume is like... Mm. for lighting when they were doing this gruesome mm. decapitation i don't know i don't know but the gar- oh, yeah. the light had just been moved from the house to the garage and then nothing else was taken like no cash is, nothing is there a chance that for some weird reason the couple had actually moved the lamp out there and like this person hadn't been inside at all um you know it could be uh i think the kids so they did have the derman's children walk through the house and they seemed to think that something the happened. Lamp had been moved. Um, okay. So I mean, you know, it's possible. I just didn't know because, like, what if like the light went out in the garage, and so they were just using that as like a backup for the moment? I'm yeah. trying to. I'm trying to think of no, no. It could, that's a good point. I don't actually have any confirmation that like it. It was for sure. Well, also the the, killer. the the woman is missing, but maybe. May, I I feel like everything technically could have happened in the garage. Maybe like she got uh-huh. kidnapped from the garage, and then he got knocked down so he wouldn't help and then they cut his head but then why the cut the head off i I know it's it's again confounding like it's just gosh and it gets even more confusing so this lamp had been moved uh according to the kids the the children walked through the house to confirm everything else was in place and most astounding of all is that there was no sign of a struggle which didn't line up with the extreme violence of this crime. So Russell's autopsy found only a single laceration on an index finger. He had no bruises. He had no signs of strangulation. And blood forensics suggested that the the decapitation actually isn't what killed him. Uh, He must have died from what they think is head trauma. And now that Mm. that evidence was missing, basically, now the person took the head with them of Russell and that would have shown you know, how he actually died, uh, presumably from blunt force trauma, something like that. Wow. Uh, So forensics experts think he was likely decapitated using a machete, of all things, which the killer would... What a specific weapon. I know. And it says they would have had to bring that with them. um, And the, the reason they think it's a machete is because the tool had to be extremely sharp and precise, and it matched up with how a machete would have left the mark on his neck. Ugh, so disturbing. Mm. You know, I'm thinking, too, when we were talking about the towels, I assume he would have had to go inside to get the towels, unless there was unless there were towels in the garage. I mean, I don't have a garage, but if I did, I'd have towels in there. Yeah, there'd just probably like, be towels like, in there. If there was, like, a, an art project. I don't know. Like, if I just think of, like, well, oh, wait, to spray hold on. paint something. But they're or... at the lake, so they probably do have plenty of towels. Oh, they my God. They live totally the have towels. They <laughs> totally stupid, have towels sorry. in the garage. Okay. It didn't even occur to me. So, yeah. They so, po- yeah. I So, now I'm thinking my, fir- my gut instinct is that this person did not bring towels. I think they didn't realize how much blood there'd be and just grabbed at Grab whatever he what could find. was there, which makes sense. Um but also remember the front door was unlocked too so if they wanted to they could have gone in the front door but also if it's such a sleepy town with no crime and these are like beloved a beloved couple like yeah they might have just always had their door unlocked that's true too but then why wouldn't the person go in the house to like take shit like from the garage at least or you know what i mean like i'm i don't know why but i'm my priority my i'm i'm operating i'm 
Oh, Jesus Christ. I'm currently operating under the, like, I have yet to see a reason why they'd go inside. If the towels were already outside, the lamp is a weird one, but currently, like, all of my guesses mm-hmm. are that nothing has even happened so, in the so house. So your theory is, like, they weren't trying to rob them. No, I, f- I feel like it was, like, they just got attacked getting out of their car in the garage or something. But, like, why? I don't know. I have no idea. It's just, I'm just trying to think of anything yeah the garage i guess makes the most sense like maybe they were hiding out in the garage because if it was i mean i don't understand why there would be someone with such a violent vendetta against them but i also don't understand why they would go into the house and then not rob them so like it had to be an intentional violent act no you're right you're right and i wonder if they like waited in the garage and then when the door closed they attacked maybe they planned on robbing them and they were hiding in the garage and didn't expect them to come into the garage. And like, it just had to happen in there instead of yeah. before the guy ever got into the house. Then you'd think that they would have robbed them once they were dead. That's true. I don't know. Yeah, or maybe he so fled. Confusing. Jeez. Okay. Well, I'll give you more information and then maybe you can yeah, yeah, yeah. piece more together. Um, so this machete is what they think happened, you know, was used to kill him or not, de- not to kill him, but to decapitate him. Uh, there was no blood spatter inside the garage or otherwise. There was no sign of a fight. Nothing. It seemed like Russell was murdered by an experienced and intelligent killer who either killed him elsewhere and moved him or did such a precise job that he was able to clean up after himself and leave the place like completely clean. So yeah, that feels impossible. So odd. I feel like if you like now that I'm operating under the assumption that they he didn't plan for there to be so much blood in the garage and then was like using towels to clean it up. I feel like this guy like it would have not been. Yeah, it doesn't fit my first choice at a perfectly clean home after something. Yeah, it doesn't totally fit, uh, especially if there was no no blood spatter anywhere else um right it's just odd it doesn't really fit um it it, but it also it seemed like out of place in general that somebody would like assassinate them like this Uh, no it makes no sense it's so odd and if if it had been like an assassination then they would have expected to find both bodies in the house like they would have left both of them also like why like why take the head if he was going to get identified anyway like, like if what are either you trying take to hide the head and the body or take neither exactly like why are you trying to what are you trying to hide with that it's yeah. so odd it's so odd uh and so that part definitely doesn't make sense um and if it had been like a plotted assassination they would have expected both of the bodies if it had been an abduction then why a why did they uh go through the trouble of you know beheading this guy russell or but also now that they're looking for Shirley, why hadn't anyone reached out for a ransom? Because mm-hmm. they were a wealthy couple. You'd think like maybe they wanted ransom money for Shirley, but they heard absolutely nothing. So they were just so confused. Um, 125 deputies from around the state searched the woods for Russell's head. They found nothing. And then finally on May 16th, which was 10 days after Russell's body was found, a boater uh, found Shirley's body floating (gasps) five to six miles from her home in Lake Oconee. Uh, She was floating in the water upright with her face and shoulders in the water. And so tragically, she had also been killed. Um, And the man who found her, her was actually haunted by how carelessly she had been like discarded almost in the lake. Um, and he, here's a quote from him. He said, I've seen more people show respect to a garbage bag and a Coke can in the lake <gasps> than what that was. Oh my God. Which is just like so upsetting. And it's 2014 and they were grandparents, right? Yep. So they had, they have children who are currently out there having to live knowing that that's a quote uh, ex- about their mom. Exactly. Exactly. Oh my God. I know. Oh my God. It's, uh, it's very, it's just, it's just very tragic there's really no better word for it um and so as soon as police and fbi responded and pulled her from the water uh, of course media swarmed in because you know they had known about this developing story a news camera crowded the sheriff and he said to the camera this this is where this sheriff this fucking guy is a character okay so he says to the camera i'm gonna tell you a little bit at the office okay if you want the stench of death i will rub it on you so he just wanted them (gasps) away so basically oh, okay. i think what he was saying is like i'll tell you when i get back to my office like leave me alone or i'll i'll 
you know, rub this on you because I'm busy uh-huh. right now trying to deal with this, I think is what he's trying to say. Um, the decomposition on Shirley was extreme. So they had lost quite a bit of evidence. Um, she was still fully clothed. She even had her shoes still on. And the autopsy found that she had been struck in the head three or four times and had died of blunt force trauma. And the most likely weapon was a hammer. Holy shit. I know. It's so gruesome. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That poor fucking woman. I know. It's so gruesome. And, like, just to add to it, one investigator said it was possibly the worst open skull fracture that I've ever seen. I really, I mean, if there's if there's a, a a hair of hope that I hope she was just not even consciously I, I, aware. I just or so something. hope she didn't know what was going on. It's fucking terrible and so gruesome and brutal and violent. Um, so wow. this is where things are adding new. El- this is where new elements come in that are that are even more confusing. That create more confusion because the killers. Or killer had then tied 60 pounds of concrete blocks in a mesh bag to her ankles to sink her. And this was like, it doesn't sound like it, but it was a wild turn in the investigation because apparently any experienced killer would know that it takes way more weight than 60 pounds of concrete to hold a body underwater. And gotcha. from what they could tell, Shirley's death seemed messy and rushed, and they clearly didn't quite know how to dispose of a body. So Which it I- was. That, again, makes me think that, like, he was never in the house because, like, if this guy is this messy and, yeah. like, by the way, like, I'm still confused. Like, why are you leaving? If he were to clean up after himself to show no sign that he was ever there, but he left a literal man's body in right? the garage. Like, I feel like I feel like he was never in the house. I don't know what to tell you about that. I, I <sighs> So I, weird. I have no idea. I, I obviously don't fucking know. I'm not a detective, but I just feel like with how messy he's been everywhere else. And like, I, again, I'm really leaning into this. Like he didn't realize how much blood there'd be in the garage. And so he scrambled for towels. Towels. He's a complete mess with this woman and like not knowing like how to properly sink a body. I I think he, there's no way he would have perfectly cleaned a house. There's no way. Interesting. I don't think it. No, it's a really fair point. I mean, I it, also don't know. I fucking no, don't sure, know. No, sure, of course. No, this is all conjecture, but like it's it's interesting to think about cuz like nobody really knows. And like the way that they saw it was, you know, with the first one being so precise and like clearly this person knew how to wield a machete strong enough to like behead a person and had cleaned up the area so well that they thought this has to be a different killer. Yeah, I was maybe it's like it was like a duo. Yeah. So then they so thought like there well, was maybe it, this was multiple people, at least two. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I mean, just it just keeps coming, doesn't it? It just keeps this? coming. And so yeah, their thought was maybe this was more than one killer, uh, with varying <laughs> levels of experience and you know, they're showing their weaknesses, so to speak, in these different acts they're doing. Um, and again, Shirley's death was so violent, but there was no sign of the attack anywhere in or near the house or garage. Like they just couldn't find any sign of this. I mean, if somebody had attacked her with a hammer, you'd think there would be like blood or evidence or something left behind. Well, I would imagine it happened maybe in, I feel like they were going to take her and like get her on the boat, but maybe she struggled so much. They just gave up. Maybe, maybe they abducted her and then killed her in the process. Yeah. Maybe they were just like, it's, it's too messy to bring her with us. And I I mean, I can't even, I I don't know, but it's it's so bizarre. I feel like a lot of it was, it feels like a lot of it was rushed, even though they may have originally had a plan. Like, yeah. where where the fuck is this guy's head and like why did they only take that but like they didn't have time to drag a body out or like if they're gonna take one of the bodies why not take both and yeah or why was one separate like i feel like they were trying to why would they bring one down to the water and keep one in the garage maybe they were going to bring both of them down to the water and didn't have enough time so they got left in the garage sure i don't know that could be maybe they were planning on taking him too and they didn't get to if the o- only evidence n- at their property was his body lying there and everything else was perfectly clean, yeah. they br- I imagine maybe they were trying to get them both on the boat to make it look like they just left town. Right. And they just like, maybe they, maybe someone saw something by the water and was like, hey, who's out there? And so they ha- ended up having to leave before they could get his body. Yeah, I don't that know. could very well be. But then I wonder, 
Because it took, like, the, the neighbors waited three days without hearing from them, which basically means, like, they had been, probably been killed on Saturday when they didn't go to, go to the derby party. So, like, three days had passed. So I feel like if it was that, like, they had time to go back, but maybe they didn't want to go back to to get him. I have no idea. I it's no just, idea. It's just disturbing. Um, so anyway, the sheriff combed the neighborhood, interviewed hundreds of neighbors, landscapers, etc. They could not find any leads. Everything was a dead end. They didn't have door cameras at this point yet. Like people didn't really have ring doorbells. Um, security cameras at the docks were all pointed at people's boats for obvious reasons, not the lake. Um, a storm had actually knocked out the camera at the security checkpoint. So there was no footage of who came and went by car, which is very frustrating. Hmm. And a neighbor did say they had seen a person in the Dermans' yard on Saturday, but they couldn't describe anything about them. They didn't remember. Um, and it could have been the killer or it could have just been wa somebody walking through and cutting through their lawn. Like, who knows? So there was no sign of forced entry, no sign of robbery. And because of the extreme violence of the killings, investigators began to believe that this was personal and like maybe the family knew more than they were letting on. So everyone became a suspect and the sheriff... This fucking guy, this is a quote from him. He said, the only person who's not a suspect is me because I know where I was. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, dude. <laughs> okay, Sheriff. It's like, according to you, right? Yeah, according to you. Yeah. Well, how am I supposed to believe that? So the oh Dermans my God. children all passed polygraph tests. They had, and this is where kind of this, like you were saying earlier, modern technology comes into play because they were able to ping where their cell phones were and place them far away from their parents' house on Saturday. So none of them were in the area. So they were pretty quickly like excluded as suspects. Um, and moreover, which, which also like imagine being the child of somebody, of one of these people who was brutally murdered and then like now being under suspicion just because you I, are a family member. It must be so devastating to go to like you don't even get to properly mourn you're just so busy not only are you now having to deal with like someone else's logistics and someone else's job because like now you're getting interrogated but also like you don't even get to properly i mean i'm talking like this has ever happened to me but i in my mind i imagine like you're trying to grieve while also like having to like someone else thinks that you're the one who caused this yeah you're defending yourself like you have to prove that you weren't there and that suddenly takes precedence over like mourning and like yeah instead of getting to grieve you have to now wonder am, am i going to fucking jail yeah exactly like, or or they're interviewing all my siblings like did somebody in my family have to do with this have anything to do with this <sighs> like there must be just so many layers of like trauma I just, there i just i just pity i just pity that whole family it just feels it just feels extremely traumatic the whole thing um and so i mean thankfully all the children you know were proven to be in different places um and moreover the killers had attempted to hide shirley's body and her financial assets would have remained frozen while she was missing so it didn't really track like if if it were the kids with a motive of like getting their parents money it didn't really make sense that they would have tried to hide her body because they wouldn't have gotten the money unless they were proven to both be dead. Does that make sense? Yes. So like they wouldn't have gotten any money until both parents were proven dead. So why try to hide one of the bodies? It didn't right. track if that was the motive they were thinking of. Um, so her children wouldn't have inherited it anyway. Um, so investigators basically exhausted every route. Like they were really trying to find any sort of path in to figure out who did this. The FBI, remember the FBI is even involved, and they said uh, the killer was likely to hunt and use knives. And the sheriff said, that's 95% of the people in Georgia. So mm. uh, that didn't get them very far, I suppose. Uh, I guess, for, yeah, if you're going to try to do something, you might as well pick a weapon that's going to be hard to track down. Hard to track and to say, like, oh, they hunt, probably. It's like, well, that doesn't narrow it down very much. Yeah. <laughs> in Georgia, anyway. So 14 years earlier, um, there was this other uh, family, you know, trauma that had happened where the eldest Derman son was actually killed in a drug deal gone bad. Oh, my God. This family just has to keep dealing with this shit. Yes. It's just uh, one thing after another. But the killer was convicted and was in prison at the time of this uh, this murder. And the son um, hadn't been like a high profile user, hadn't been a high profile 
dealer. He was just someone who had a drug addiction. He was pretty quiet, like wasn't, you know, causing any big trouble or anything. So it didn't really make sense that like 14 years later, there would be this revenge killing right. on his parents. It just, they couldn't find any sort of connection there. And so that was maybe one lead, but didn't really go anywhere. And so the media speculated, uh, you know, the Dermans were from New Jersey. Maybe there's some mafia tie there that, like, <laughs> they couldn't track down. And yeah, maybe invest- CIA or something, like some Who crazy knows? story. And, like, since it was New Jersey, they were like, maybe there was some, yeah, mafia mob connection. Stuff, mob stuff, yeah. stuff. But uh, investigators said that was baseless nonsense. So, you know, there, it All was right. just rumors. So there was no proof of this. But, you know, it's it's a thought. Um, their son Brad said it couldn't be an old enemy because, quote, obviously mom and dad at that point were in their mid to late 80s. If there were if there was an enemy out there, it would have taken place a lot sooner than that. And I right. tend to agree. Like, I agree, too. Why wait till they're 88 years old? <laughs> like, It doesn't really track unless they did something recently to really piss someone off. But it didn't seem like there was any connection there either. Like nobody yeah. could find any enemies. Then Lois Colley, a New York socialite, uh, I had actually not heard about this, but she had been found dead in her garage laundry room in New York. And she was in her 80s, wealthy from her husband's McDonald's franchise, which is very interesting, the franchise connection there. Uh, And she was killed by blunt force trauma. And so at first, authorities thought, like, maybe there's a connection here. Mm -hmm. Um, But they did find her killer. He was convicted. And when they had this killer uh, convicted, they were like, we cannot find any connection, not only to the Dermans, but to Georgia at all. And so okay. this just seemed so to be a total coincidence. Dead end. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So investigators considered Russell's death again and again. They thought maybe he had been shot. And so that's why the killer took the head to hide the evidence of what bullet was used, mm. which I guess makes sense. But then why did they use a hammer to kill Shirley? Yeah. Uh, so they thought maybe they were taking it to hide evidence. Um which to me is really the only thing that makes sense, unless it was like that they were trying to get a trophy or something. But taking the head seems like a pretty wild trophy I mean, to take. That's yeah, that's not just a trophy. That's that's uh, a lot. I can't think of anything more personal. Like that, that almost feels like it's like an intentional emotional robbing of the children. Yeah, or it feels extra. Like it feels unnecessary and extra gruesome. And so my thought is it's either that, like something trying to be really, someone trying to be very emotionally cruel, or it's like there was evidence they were trying to hide. And so they took the head. I mean, I feel like that does make some sense with the bullet. Like maybe they shot him and they couldn't get the bullet, so they took the head. I'm not sure. Um, oh, okay. Do you know? Sure. So yeah. I, I guess that could be it. Um, that's the only other thing that makes sense to me. Um Perhaps the killers, like you mentioned, planned to move his body like they had Shirley's, uh, but they couldn't move it for some reason. So they had to take his head instead, which is odd. Uh, you, like he still had, you left his fingers for like fingerprints. for what? Like, yeah, like for what purpose? I don't know. Yeah. And also like if you let him keep his head, like it was still him in his own house. Like people would know what body that was in the house yeah it's not like they were hiding unless they were hiding their own identity by taking the head then i don't see why take it i guess so yeah i would i would just think at that point like i think it would be easier to drag some someone away than take their head though yeah yeah if if you're trying to like hide evidence just hide just take him yeah it doesn't it (sighs) does not it does not add up So at this point, investigators are thinking the murders probably aren't professional, but they were intelligent enough to be able to cover their tracks um, in that they had left no fingerprints. They had left no foreign DNA. They had left nothing else at the scene besides some slight evidence of a cleanup, but nothing drastic. Um, Like, disturbingly enough, some of Shirley's hair was actually found in Russell's hand. Oh, no. uh, What does that mean? They think they were possibly together uh, at the time of the attack and killed simultaneously. And so their son thinks he was trying to protect her and maybe like cover her with his own body and like grab her. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's, of course, just getting worse, uh, worse and worse. 
Um, theories ranged from serial killers to a depraved local cult, but there really was no evidence of anything. It was like a ghost just came in, came and went, and left zero clues. And like, imagine being the family, just wondering, like, am I next? Or right, like, good I mean, point. The fact that these people just fucking got away with it, like they're just sitting at a bar somewhere, maybe bragging about yeah, it. Yeah, like, and you, you think, me? like, yeah, like, are am I next? Or like, is it someone I know? You know, you don't even know if like yeah. maybe this is somebody your family yeah. knows. Like, which are is you also like, disturbing. are you confiding in the right people? Like, <gasps> yeah. what if they come to the funeral? Oh my Ooh, god, there's so much creepiness there in like the unanswered questions oh my god so the the poor the therapy that they need i just like it's it's of all of all you know losing i imagine parents is a very traumatic thing but losing them in like such a way where you don't have answers must just be i mean there's there's no there's no death quite like violent death and especially when it's unsolved violent death and you don't even know the if the people around you are safe and absolutely and you know they had their own kids to worry about too it's 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 all very scary um and so i really am hoping they figure figure out what the fuck happened yeah um well time you know went on the community's fear faded people started to move on as they do um but of course, not the Dermans family and not the sheriff on the case. Um, in a documentary, he said he still thinks about the case every single day. He said oh. it's actually the only homicide in his 48 career that he hasn't solved. I mean, again, this just isn't a very violent group, you know, town. And so yeah. he doesn't have that many like big mysteries like this. To I mean, to also solve. the survivor's guilt of like this this was like the only one big case i've ever yeah. had to really hunker down on and and still probably feel like you didn't succeed and yeah and still and so to that to that point he has the file still open on his desk every day and he refuses oh to put it away and is like hoping for answers so now we fast forward and this is where there's a slight glimmer of hope because in may of 2022 so like a couple months ago um new evidence has surfaced and they are able to now use new technology that wasn't available in 2014, which is very interesting because at the beginning you mentioned like, oh, well, it mm-hmm. seems recent enough that, but you know, this is what I'm always hoping for is that technology is advancing and we don't even know yet what we'll be able to solve in the future. Yeah. Um, and so there is this new technology where they are able to evaluate phone records uh, involved in the case. So the FBI is looking into that right now. Um, however, we don't, really have more information than that they have not made it public what the evidence is or what this may mean um but we can only hope that uh you know the fact that there is new evidence being looked at is a good sign and might bring some answers geez i hope so this one really got me particularly i know know, intensely So Brad and the rest of the family hold out hope that the case will still be solved one day, as does the, as does the sheriff leading it, um, as do we, <laughs> obviously. Yeah. Uh, you know, all hope is not lost. It looks like there is a chance that maybe more information will come to light here. So we'll keep an eye on that for sure. And Brad said recently that he hoped that person with that little sliver of knowledge would come forward and that would be very much appreciated with our family. Yeah. So, if you are at a bar and you hear some dude bragging about macheteing an old man, you know, something like that, Definitely, speak up. Uh, see something, say something, hear something, say something, sense something, say something. Absolutely. Yeah. Oish. Absolutely. So that's the story of Russell and Shirley Dermond. And I, I really do hope that um, we get some answers soon because just the brutality and like, that's why it's so confounding is like, it doesn't make sense. You know, it does not make sense. There's I, not I, even like a motive of like, oh, it, mu- it might have been this guy. There's nothing, no- nothing like that. No leads whatsoever. There's got to be something. It's got to say something about me where I, I always think when you say there's an unsolved mystery, I'm like, oh, I'm the fresh eyes it. that were neat. <laughs> I was what was needed. Like, what, uh, who the fuck do I think I am? But like, uh, I really, I just, I wanted, I just so badly want those poor people to not suffer anymore but i'm obviously they think about it every day it, oh my god i, I know. just i know i if you ever get an update on this one i, I really Absolutely. gotta know about it we're gonna keep uh, i might put a google alert out you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. well geez louise at least technology is getting better i you really did 
surprise me there because in my mind the newest technology is still like a decade old like, exactly it doesn't so. feel like it would be you know because st- 2014 seems recent but then you think about it it's like eight years ago it's almost a decade ago you know so Whew. eight years ago now um so maybe uh maybe things are i don't know gonna get answered i i really hope so i'm excited for whatever the next big like DNA testing kind of technology is where it's like, oh, we never had this technology before and now yep. it's just going to change the guy. You know, game. I think that a lot because some cases seem like so, you know, they've just like lost all hope. But then, yeah, you realize like, well, maybe there's something we can test that like at this point we don't even consider. Like yeah. maybe there's some way we can test something like, that we haven't even thought of. What's been sitting in a box in storage for yep. 50 years that's going to be the thing that like figures it out for you? That would be... That would be amazing. Like, I really hope. Um, And I know this is a bummer, but I'm sending a picture of them and their grandkids. And uh, we'll put this on Instagram. And I'd like to blur out the kids' faces just because, you know, that's that's For obvious reasons. Yeah. But. um, Oh, my God. Wow. They just look so cute. I know. Like, children are cute. They look so happy. Just like the sweetest elderly couple, you know. it's. And I really, I know we talk about this all the time, but because it's 2014 and it feels so much more recent. I mean, that's, that's a picture that could have been taken yesterday. Like, yep, exactly, exactly. And like, it looks like someone could, who could be your neighbor, you know? Yeah. Oh my so God. Why? That's, that's the story. Um, very tragic. And, uh, those poor little grandkids, they look so cute. I know they are actually very, very cute. Um, um wow. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> well, I hope everyone enjoyed their weekly uh, bummer. Downer. Yeah, their <laughs> weekly bummer. Exactly. Man. Uh, my bad. My bad. Um, we're going to do a little, uh, we're going to discuss our favorite uh, Star Wipe, our favorite custom animation uh, in an after chat. Oh, <laughs> okay. Hey, let's do that. That'll definitely brighten some, lift some spirits. For Patreon. So yeah, we'll we'll try to lift each other's spirits and hopefully some of yours in the process. So we'll see you there. We'll catch you catch you on on the flip side, cool cats. All right. That's right. That's right. And that's why we drink. <laughs>